Welcome back to XFi and Cardaides.org. Today we're going to be taking a look at what is topic modeling for philosophy. So, topic modeling is a type of automated text analysis where computers attempt to understand human writing. Check out our previous video on automated text analysis for philosophy for a general primer on what we're talking about when we're talking about automated text analysis and how we're using it in the context of philosophy as well as other humanities. Specifically, topic modeling attempts to define topics present in a collection of texts or documents. In this video, we'll look very generally at topic modeling and how to interpret its results. In a future video, we'll cover more of the details of how topic modeling works, as well as kind of a process of how you can do it yourself, and how this can be applied very specifically to philosophy. So, there are several types of topic modeling, but for our purposes, we're going to be talking about LDA topic modeling, or latent Dirichlet allocation with Gibbs sampling. Whew. That's a lot. Don't worry if that sounds intimidating. This video is going to walk you through what the system is doing at a basic level so you can understand and interpret results. I'm not trying to teach you how to make your own LDA system, but fortunately for the philosophers out there that may be less tech savvy, there are systems out there that exist. The goal of this is to help you understand if you get the results from an LDA topic model, understand and interpret them, as well as understand what inputs you would need to provide to a topic model to get results that make sense. Let's take a look. So, to a computer, documents are just another kind of data. Those documents are made up of different words. Certain words are more common in certain documents and less common in others. Each document could be described simply by the share of each word it's comprised of. A document might be 10% the, 5% and, 2% is, etc. Less common words, of course, will have smaller percentages. Topics, then, are an intermediate level between words and documents. All documents are made up of topics, and all topics are made up of words. With LDA, documents can be comprised of different proportions of topics. For example, a paper might be 30% metaphysics and 70% epistemology. The paper is the document, metaphysics and epistemology are the two topics, and the words within those topics are how we understand what the computer would be telling us as this is probably something like metaphysics and this is probably something like epistemology. Topics, in turn, are comprised of various shares of words, which are more or less likely to be associated with that topic. Our epistemology topic, for example, might have knowledge and belief as its most prevalent words, making up a large share of the topic, whereas words like property or substance might be much less common in that topic, but much more common in metaphysics as a topic, which is why we could interpret that one topic is epistemology, another topic is metaphysics. Each word in a topic is assigned a percentage that sums to 100%, and each topic in a document is assigned a percentage that sums to 100%. So topics are made up of words that sum to 100%, and documents are made up of topics that sum to 100%. So when you give a topic modeling program a set of documents, it will spit out the topics that make up those documents, such that every document is just comprised of those topics and the words that make up those topics. We'll look at an example later, so it's okay if this is a little confusing right now. Here's, here's a very general example to start with. So imagine you have a couple of documents you're inputting into a topic model. So document one, we have word one is about 1%, word two is 0.9%, and so on. What you're actually inputting is the documents themselves. The computer is then going and calculating what percentage of the document is each word. The system then takes the share of each word that a given document contains and outputs the most common words in each topic and the topics that make up each document. So it says, okay, based on these words, I think that we have some topics. So another thing that you're inputting into the system is how many topics there are. So let's say we told the system there are only two topics in these documents. So it said, okay, I'm looking for two topics. What can I do? Well, words one, three, and two seem to appear more frequently together, and words four and two seem to appear frequently together. And then it would have a full list of all of the words in the documents going all the way down. 
and all those percentages would sum up to the total. But you could identify what those topics are by the most prevalent words. So I would look at words 1, 3, and 2, and I would say, based on these, I think this topic is probably saying this thing, because the program won't name the topic for you. And based on word 4 being really prevalent in topic 2, I think this document is talking about this thing. Then the system will also output the percentage of each given document that is made up of those topics. So document one might be 70% topic one and 30% topic two. Document two might be 90% topic one and 10% topic two, etc. So what you're inputting into the system is just documents and words, as well as the number of topics that you want. And then the system is giving you out topics that it doesn't name, but it tells you what the most likely words in those topics are, as well as documents, which are split between the different topics. So, beyond the text themselves, which are divided into documents, there are a couple of other parameters you need to provide the system of LDA topic modeling to work. And note, when you're dividing your kind of texts, you can divide this in different ways. So, these might be very short documents, like tweets are each an individual topic, or they might be very long topics, like a full philosophy paper or a larger philosophy book put into the system as each of the individual documents. So first, you need to provide the number of topics you think are in the text. The LDA system doesn't know how many topics are there. It needs you to tell it how many topics do you think it sh you should sort them into. And often it makes sense to start with a number and then add or subtract as necessary. So put in a number, say you guess there are five topics. You put that number in, you see what comes out. If it seems like some topics are capturing two different concepts, then maybe you need more topics. If it seems like there's a couple topics that are capturing the same thing, maybe you need fewer. The other thing you're going to be inputting is something called stop words. Stop words are words that are common to all of the text and so aren't relevant for determining topics and are just going to confuse the model because words like the, and, is, a are going to be everywhere and they're going to be very, very common and the model is going to look to those words first to try to figure out how to create topics. But that's probably not what you're going to be looking for. So. The words you choose for your stop words will depend on the type of analysis you're running. If you're running kind of a literary topic modeling or attempting to use topic modeling to determine something like authorship, you might include very few stop words because the number of times someone uses and, is, or the might actually matter for their writing style because you care about modeling topics based on the way something was written. How many ands, thes, ands, is, is, etc. However, if you're looking for philosophical topics, or kind of the actual content of the documents, not just the style, you might want to include many more stop words to ensure you're not splitting topics based on style, but rather splitting them based on content. Now, how could this be useful for philosophy? Topic modeling is useful for pulling out topics and identifying trends in collections of text that you might not notice when just looking at them individually. It can help you do things like identify writing patterns or phrases used by certain individuals. It can provide potentially more objective comparisons of texts than human analysis. And critically, it can analyze many more texts than a human could ever read in their life. And so by doing this and by running these analyses, you can capture stories that are being told across many, many different texts without actually reading them. So, I said we were going to get to an example. Here's an example with four simple five-word documents. So imagine we have these four documents. Document one, there's only five words in it. It says knowledge, mind, belief, belief, knowledge. Deep, complex, philosophical paper there. Document two, mind, body, substance, substance, body. Document three, proposition, belief, sentence, proposition, sentence. And document four, belief, knowledge, proposition, proposition, mind. So we input these documents into a topic modeling program. And we tell that topic modeling program there are no stop words. All of these words matter, because we don't have any is's, ands, those. But also we say we think there are three topics present. And looking at these documents, I think that makes sense. There seems to be kind of an epistemology topic. There seems to be a metaphysics topic. And then maybe a philosophy of language topic as well. So 
then the program spits us out this information. So it says topic one. I don't know what it's called, but the most common word is knowledge, the second most common word is belief, then mind, then proposition. We, as the human interpreter, might say, ooh, that sounds a lot like epistemology. Topic two, substance is the most common, then body, then mind. Uh, that, that might sound like metaphysics, sure. And topic three, sentence, proposition are the most common, followed by belief and mind. Yeah, that probably sounds like philosophy of language. So once again, what you're getting out is the list of words that are the most common, and the interpretation you have to bring to it is what do those mean in terms of what might that topic actually be talking about. Then the system is going to spit out for you the percentage of these documents that fit into those topics. So it says document one, this is strongly about epistemology, 90% topic one, and a little bit topic two and three. Document two, pretty strongly metaphysics, 95% that, with 4% topic one and 1% topic three, and so on. You get out these and then use your interpretive skills. Now, with small documents like this, we can clearly read them and figure out the topics present in them. But imagine you had a thousand documents, and instead of five words long, they were thousands of words long. You could use a topic modeling system to attempt to figure out which of these documents are about epistemology, which are about metaphysics, which are about philosophy of language, if those are the topics that your program identifies, but your program might identify different topics because the documents might be different. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a sense. We are going to have another video that is going to go into a specific example, hopefully using Plato's dialogues, of how topic modeling can be used for philosophy. So stay tuned for that. Like I said, stay tuned for three upcoming videos applying this method to an actual philosophical text, looking at how the system calculates these topics, and a how-to guide to run your own topic modeling. Watch more videos at XFI to learn more about experimental philosophy, and as always, check out carneades.org for more videos, and stay skeptical.